Welcome to Decide to Transform. You made it to level two. Deeper questions leading to deeper answers. I'm Tomas Garza, and I'm here to help you decide to transform. I'll be setting the pace for the process to support your unfolding. Learn and commit to a practice that brings simplicity and awareness of what is ready to be released. Join me now and allow the experience of a deeper sense of love. Welcome, welcome to Decide to Transform. I'm your host, Tomas Garza, and I hope that wherever you are in the world that you're enjoying a beautiful day or a beautiful evening, if it's evening. Thank you for joining us live here on Decide to Transform on Ohm Times Radio. We have a fantastic show in store for you today, and I know that you're going to get so much out of it. My lovely and beautiful wife, Cindy Garza, is back on the show again this week. And if you missed her last week, I invite you to go back and listen to last week's show, Health, Wellness, and Spirituality, from February 11th. We talked about a number of items related to these three areas and how spirituality underlies and plays a critical role in health and wellness. And today we're going to take that one step further. Now, background information on Cindy. Cindy is an expert in the health, wellness, and fitness industry, having owned a women's health club in McMinnville, Oregon for 21 years, having served as both a Pilates and a yoga instructor, and now having served for seven plus years at this point as a transformational wellness coach. Cindy has seen people work through and helped people work through a number of issues and a number of concepts. Cindy, welcome back to the show today. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. And we're definitely, most definitely excited to have you. Last week, guys, we talked about health, wellness, and spirituality in general. And one of the things that came up for us on the show was the idea of people's concepts around health, wellness, and spirituality. The idea that people have all kinds of preconceived notions and blocks about this. And we both agreed that this would be a great topic. So why do you suppose, Cindy, that people have so many concepts and preconceived notions around this? Oh, wow. Actually, you know, um, this is not, it's not limited to health and wellness by any means. Concepts are just kind of a part of life, you right, know? Right, right, right. Yeah, it's a part of life. And, um, you know, that's just the part that I uh, specialize in and that I focus on. But, um, you know, we, we are raised to believe certain things. And, you know, we definitely uh, learn from our surroundings, from the people who most influence us in our lives as we're growing up as children. You know, most of our concepts start at a very early age and um, they grow and they expand into other parts of our life and, um, you know, create a whole lot of judgment and um, limitations in our lives. And so, you know, it, it's it's a always expanding kind of a I guess a problem you would say it's uh, it's something that we we think one thing about ourselves and create a concept around it and then we kind of have to create another concept to support that one and it's kind of um, a vicious cycle that continues to grow and um, I think the the place we have to start with all of it is recognizing these concepts in our life and why they limit us and how they limit us. And so that's kind of what I'm excited to talk about today. I love it. Right. Yeah. With any problem solving, it's recognition of the problem, isn't it? Because you don't know, if you don't know a problem actually exists, then how can anyone ever expect you to solve that problem? Now, one thing that we talked about before the show was the idea and the notion of fear that underlies those concepts. And we talked about coming back to that later on in the show, but one, of, and we will do that. One of the things that I want to ask you about then is you mentioned a vicious cycle 
with these concepts. And in your work with people in health and wellness, how do you see this vicious cycle playing out? Oh, wow. Yeah, that's that's a good question. And really and truly, we... Um, you know, we make up these stories of limitation in our lives, you know, our concepts. And um, we we really just decide that we can't accomplish things, that we, uh, you know, things are too difficult. Um, I don't have the time. I don't have the money. Um, you know, it's a lot of self-worth issues. People just don't feel like they're important enough. Like, um, you know, they... The sad, the sad truth is they don't love themselves enough to work on it. And um, that is one of the biggest concepts I think that um, a lot of people deal with. Uh, you mentioned earlier when um, you were introducing me about how I, I owned the women's gym for 21 years. And right. yeah, and that was that was a big, big eye opener um, for me. But but also it was my comfort zone because I limited myself um, to, you know, just just being there and only feeling like I could connect with women. And for a period of time, that was my that was what I was good at, and that was where I did feel comfortable. I see. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, so that was a big one. But um, you know, what it also showed me was it showed me how limiting women were in their belief in themselves to accomplish things and to make really healthy, positive changes and empower themselves to do great things with them, their lives. They limited themselves to certain things. I mean, not all women, but I saw a lot of it. And that, um, you know, that was a big part of it for me. Okay. And say some more about that. What did you see people, these women limiting themselves to the most, or how did the limitation most show up in your experience? Well, I guess, you know, I mean, first of all, I, I think one big step that they would take was that they actually showed up at the gym. They came to the gym. Okay. You know, yeah. so, so their first, their, their concept was, you know, that they, it took them a long time to get there. Often, yeah, oftentimes they were just, um, they didn't feel like they could uh, take the time out of their lives to take care of themselves. And so they got to, you know, a really bad place before they showed up at the gym, um, physically, emotionally. Um, there was zero self-care in their lives and all of their life revolved around caring for their family, uh, caring for their home. Um, you know, filling a role that was just super limiting to them. Um, you know, the cool thing, though, is that all of the women at the gym weren't that way. Definitely, of course, right. You know, there, there was the, the women who were, right. who were very outgoing. This was their life, and they thrived in it. And so luckily, when you bring community together, they lift each other up, and they help each other overcome concepts. And so um, them you know, coming to that setting of coming together, they were able to see other women who, you know, didn't, didn't lose who they were because of uh, the fact that they embraced a healthy lifestyle and they were able, that helped them to grow and, and notice the limitations they put on themselves and to, um, you know, become more involved and become more dedicated to their own personal health and well-being and, and then also to share it with others because, you know, we overcome okay. yeah. we overcome concepts mm -hmm. when we realize that we're not in it alone. We ask for guidance. We ask for help. And I think that is so important, so big. You know, like we said, first you have to recognize it. And then, you know, and I think that, that you, you observe it in other people, kind of like the opposite of your concept. Okay. You, you observe it in other people and how they're living their lives. And you kind of realize, geez. You know, maybe, maybe I should try it. Maybe I'm limiting myself. And uh, then, you know, and you're admiring what they're doing and it can really help to start to get out of that concept and to start, you know, step into it and to start challenging yourself to face it and start dealing with it. 
I see, right. And um, guys listening in, we talked about this last week is the power of community, and that is certainly one of the concepts. Um, Cindy, would you say some more about a concept that we talked about? And did you see this? I'm curious, when you owned a the women's gym, also do you see it now? And that's the idea that people feel they should be able to do this on their own own. Would you say some more about that? Do you still see that going on in your practice? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that is such a good question because, you know, I think I think that lots of times by the time people come to me now working as a coach, um, I think that lots of times by the time that they come to me, they've realized they can't do it alone. And so, um, and, and some people, you know what, some people are amazingly self-motivated and they can do it alone, but it's not as much fun. Why would you want to do it alone when you can do it together? Why would you want to keep it all to yourself <laughs> and when you can, you know, you can do it together and you can, you know, we, we, the teacher learns more than the student, but uh, yet, right. But yes. yet the student is also the teacher, and so we're kind of learning the same. You know, we're, we're learning all at the same level. And, okay. um, you know, part of, of uh, that whole process is, is recognizing, you know, the, the person who feels like they can do it on an island, again, that's their concept, and they're observing other people accomplish more than they're accomplishing. The, the, the desire to um, better themselves to you know, develop on their own personal level, whatever that looks like, um, the desire for that becomes more powerful than the guilt that they're feeling about how they should be able to do something on their own. Okay. And did you see that very often in your work exclusively with women at the health club where people thought that they should be able to do all of this all by themselves? Sure, definitely. You know, the um, I was a personal trainer. I did a lot. You oh, know, I, uh -huh. I taught I taught every type of class that ever existed. Um, I <laughs> during the period of time that I owned the gym, I taught all classes. I I remember these classes, guys. Yes. Yeah. Oh yes, yes, <laughs> many classes, practiced, put together, choreographed, taught. Um, it's what it's what kept me going back. Um, I definitely did not have a concept of my own about. Um, being able to do it on my own. My concept was the opposite. I had to do it with others or my concept was that I wouldn't do it alone. So that was one I had to overcome. Um, but, uh, oh gosh, I got lost on the question. Well, <laughs> the question uh, you were, you're answering it um, is, did you see a lot of women at the Women's Health Club feeling like they should be able to do it on their own? Oh, right. Because we see this with guys all um, the time, the suck it up. Up, I'm going to be a rugged individualist mentality, and absolutely. apparently you saw it with the ladies as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know that that I, I really think of that when I think of um, my the part where I was a personal trainer, um, both a personal trainer and um, teaching the classes. The women that knew they weren't going to do it alone um, came to classes. And they, they thrived in that community. They had fun. There was, you know, usually music involved. They pushed each other to work harder and to better themselves. And so that was really great. Um, then there was, there was the people who, um, you know, I think lots of times people don't reach out for help because of their shyness, their, um, okay, you know, right. low self-esteem. They, they feel like, um, you know, I'll, I'll just hold everybody back. If I go take that class, I'm going to be the klutz in the room and nobody wants me to be around, which is the farthest thing from the truth. Um, I think people who are who have built up their own confidence in that class um, look at others and say, oh, my gosh, I'm so proud of them for coming. I'm so proud of them for asking if they can participate, for joining us. And then they want to help you to grow and change. And that's really and truly all teachers are that way. People feel stupid. They feel unworthy. They feel, yeah. you know, they feel right. like um, they're just going to be yep. a pain to to be in that environment. But really and truly, teachers thrive. Um, and we're all teachers, right? We we all 
thrive when someone needs our help and when we can feel valuable and, and be able to assist someone. And so, um, you know, in, in like in the personal training field, when people felt like, oh, I can just do it on my own, I don't need to hire a personal trainer, then um, they wouldn't. And the people who were, you know, working with a trainer and um, would invest that money in themselves were thriving and moving forward and making big changes and, and growing, whereas the person who just figured they'd do it on their own, they didn't need, they'd, they'd done it in the past, they knew what they were doing, but they'd been doing the same workout routine for the last five years, you know, um, that person was kind of stuck. Imagine that, right. you know, <laughs> doing the same old thing. And so, yeah, definitely um, I used to see it and I see it now, but oftentimes, like I said, um, once people finally reach out to me, I mean, they're holding on to their concept for two, three years until they do reach out to me, Sure. which is very common. You know, someone is um, wanting to change and they're watching and they're waiting to get convinced enough that it, they're, you know, it, it's something that they should try, that they should go ahead and reach out and ask for support. And then, but they'll admit, they'll admit, you know, I finally, I, I thought I could do it alone, but I realized mm. I couldn't. I see. And is there one thing in particular that you say to people that come to you at that state? Is there one, for example, helpful phrase or message that you have for somebody that's been hanging on to a concept for two or three years? Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, you know, I mean, there's lots of different things that I say, but I think um, people love to be celebrated. Okay. You know, people love to be celebrated. And I think making a decision to reach out and ask for help is super exciting. That is like, oh my gosh. When you finally take the plunge and you do it, it's like, you know, facing your fears, stepping into that okay. fear of admitting sure. you can't do it alone. And having the opportunity to celebrate what that person has done and just saying, I am, you know, I'm just so glad that you reached out because we are gonna have fun, this is gonna be great and we're gonna work together and we're gonna just, you know, help you create what it is you've been really wanting to create all along and you don't have to do it alone. We're gonna do it together. I love that, yes. You don't have to do it alone, we're going to do it together. And we're gonna cut to a commercial here and when we come back, Cindy is going to take us through some more concepts around health, wellness, and spirituality. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. You're listening to Decide to Transform on Ohm Times Radio. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hi, I'm Tomas Garza, author of Decide and host of Decide to Transform on Ohm Times Radio. I want to ask you, if you want something in life, have you decided on it? If not, you'll listen to a limiting story about yourself. You will say you can't, you're too old, too young, etc. Decide to transform in life. Learn what you can choose to believe instead of your limiting stories. Decide. Available now in paperback and ebook. Did you know that you have the power to change anything in your life? Did you know you can do so even with the things that you've already decided are impossible to change? Come join me, Venus Castleberg, on Outside the Impossible as I interview people from around the globe that have literally changed the things they thought were impossible to change just by using the amazing tools of Access Consciousness. Now airing Wednesdays, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. Do you dare to believe that anything really is possible? Hope you 
Sheets has taken everything and everyone I've ever loved away from me. Everything. I blew my ankle out and I got prescribed pain pills by my doctor. If making my detox public is going to help somebody, I'm all for it. I just wish I would have had a warning. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth. Spread the truth. A message from Truth, the Ad Council, and ONDCP. Welcome back to Decide to Transform. I'm your host, Tomas Garza, and with me is my beautiful and highly knowledgeable wife, Cindy Garza, who's joined me for the second straight week here. If you're just tuning in, Cindy and I are talking about our concepts around health, wellness, and spirituality. And we were just chatting during the commercial break here about some other common concepts that people have and that Cindy sees all of the time in her work as a transformational wellness coach. And one of the concepts that I'd like to have us talk about is really common. And do you ever see a lot of people who won't spend money on their health, whether it's a gym membership or something else, they won't spend money on that, but they eagerly spend it on medical bills? Oh, man, totally. Yes, that is something that is so scary to me because, um, you know, once when, when people come to me as a client, they've, you know, they've already often, anyway, lots of times they've already reached that place where their bodies are breaking down, the inflammation is extremely high in their bodies and it's causing all kinds of problems. And, um, you know, they've got a lot of weight to lose, their stress is through the roof, their sleep is horrible, they, you know, their nutrition is horrible, yeah. they're dehydrated half of the time or all the time. Um, there's so many things that they just have lost track of and, um, you know, self care, all of it is, it's so important. And, um, they get wrapped up in the fact that, well, they're going to die or they're going to be miserable if they don't spend the money on their medical care. You know, they're spending hundreds or thousands of dollars every month on medical care. Right. You know, between insurance, you know, costs and of their insurance, and then co-pays and medications that aren't covered by their their insurance, and just all of these things that they're spending money on. But um, they and they'll find the you know if the doctor says you have to have this, they're going to find a way to pay for that that uh, medication or you know that doctor appointment or whatever it is they're going to miss that day of work they're going to you know whatever it is that they have to do they'll make it happen but something as simple as making a you know a small investment in getting healthy when they've even seen no, no. it working and um but but they they have this block about that it's just going to be too much work and they don't have the money to do it but it would cost a fraction of what it would what it costs them every month to pay for their medical That's care it. yeah well and when you see that um how do you help people turn that around yeah well you know and that's a big one that's often a difficult one because the financial piece is is one that's a real thing and right, and yeah. you know oftentimes they're just going deeply into debt for their medical care you know they are charging things because all of their money is going towards their medical care or whatever and and so that's you know adding to the whole thing um and and really it's it's kind of it's the time it's the time that and and um the pain that pushes them to realize you know i've got to do something and obviously i'm not getting better um i use social media a lot okay right um you know i mean sh i'm sure that the majority of the people listening to this um have you know seen our our uh, message about being on the show today and talking about this well i hope so yeah, yeah. right <laughs> and um and so social media is a huge platform that i use for helping people to see what's what can happen for them and, um, you know, my clients and, and fellow health coaches that share on Facebook, on Instagram, you know, different different um, platforms that they use, um, it, it shows the story of people who have been successful and, 
and they've gone from you know being on death's door in some cases no to doubt. to finally just making a decision trusting trust is huge you know right. trusting that someone can help you and that it can be an answer for you um, so it's a concept that is so important to challenge yourself with and just say you know what if it feels like I can't pay for it right now, what do I need to do so that I can pay for it? Okay. Yeah. And that's a biggie. All right. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned trust just a second ago. And why is it so difficult, do you suppose, for people to trust, even when they're faced with all of the evidence that it works for other people, when they're faced with hardcore numbers in the form of finances, why do you suppose it's so difficult for people to trust. Oh man, failure, past failures. Um, they don't trust themselves, you know, and it's not even so much that they don't trust the person because really and truly, um, if you commit to doing something, you know, as, as long as it's the, not the exact opposite of how to get healthy. Um, but if you trust, if you commit to doing something that is been proven to help other people, you know, get healthy, if you if you trust yourself to commit to it and okay. stick with it, that truly is what makes the difference. It's when we think that we're, um, you know, that that we can't accomplish something. It's going to be too hard. I don't have the time to do it. You know, all of these different concepts sure. that we hold on to. Right. Um, and and it keeps us from trusting someone that we know we should be able to trust. We. Um, you know, to, to guide us and then trust ourselves to follow through. But it takes, you know, it takes a total and commitment, total and, and complete commitment from your heart right. to want change, to want to feel better in your life and to let that feeling of, um, you know, what you dream of your life, your future being able to be, you need that to be what guides you. And, and to never let go of that, you know, we, we call that your why. And, and that's, okay. you know, that's yeah. not something that everybody does or most people don't know um, about your why. Your why is what's your deepest desires in your life, what, what your heart seeks out, you know, and we have to follow it and we have to um, challenge ourselves. Am I really, really putting everything I can possibly put into creating that outcome so that my why becomes a reality or am I holding myself back? And, you know, when we, when we, um, you know, prefer to go out for fast food and, um, stay in a job that we're miserable in, sure. um, do it all ourselves, uh, say we're busy and live in chaos all the time, all these things that we do because of old unhealthy habits, instead of accepting guidance and help from someone, um, who can help us to move through those those nasty places that yeah. that are making us sick and holding us back, um, and and we trust them to guide us peacefully through these places to a, to a place where we can uh, you know celebrate success and actually achieving our goals. Okay, that's you know an important part of it. Yeah, well, uh, most definitely. And when do you ever run into uh, people? that struggle expressing what their why is. And if you do, then how do you help them get clear around that? Oh man, yes. Yes, because the why is the most powerful thing to move you from being, from existing in that concept that, you know, restricting yourself, right? So, um, and, and letting that concept control your, your life. And so finding out what your why is, is so important. And it really comes from, I mean, you can ask yourself, what is it? But boy, is it helpful when someone else helps you to kind of peel the layers away and really discover your why. And, um, you know, I, I tell my clients when they will, they uh, will be talking about their why and they may break down and they're, they can't believe they're crying about it. Okay. They can't believe they're yeah. feeling so emotional. I'm like, that's perfect. Because, you know, if um, it's not that important to you, then you're probably not going to work very hard on achieving it. And, um, you know, what I really try to help people do is to start to dream again. Um, 
Gosh, dreaming is so important because we get so stuck in that world of thinking that we have to um, just live in our reality world. Don't dream. You know, you're never going to achieve your dreams. Dreaming is a waste of time, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? If you don't allow yourself to create the dream that you wish you could create, you know you want it. These are the desires, the deep-seated desires that you really want for yourself, for your own happiness, to to um, imagine yourself in a situation that is not where you're at right now because okay. you want better, you know? And right. so you have to be able to dream and imagine what you're doing in the future when you are feeling amazing, when you're healthy and you're – you're fit and you're living out your dream. You're living out the life that you imagine. And when you're in that place and you're describing that to your health coach, which is in my situation, what people are sure. doing, okay. they're right. describing to me what that looks like, you know, what it feels like, who they're doing it with, you know, what people are in their life at that time when they're experiencing the feelings that they dream of right now because they they you know sometimes they're so overweight or they're so you know their time is so overrun with work and stress or they are um you know i mean there's different reasons people come to me some people come to me because they want to lose weight some people come to me because they want to learn about my business and how they can they can also become health coaches and so sometimes it's this concept about you know I'm, i'm too busy to do anything else but it seems like the people who are most successful in business and, and creating what they want are the busiest people in the world, and they find time for something that they know is going to help. And so I think that that is such an important lesson for us to see. You know, when you are the most overwhelmed person, but you see something that really makes sense, and you know that if you committed yourself to the guidance and the support and the love that right. this person who is offering this to you, um, you know, is offering, you commit yourself to that. The time you spend on it will be so valuable okay. and it will move you forward so much that I think, um, I think that that's really helpful for people who feel so stuck to just kind of sit back and watch that and see how people do create that for themselves and, and give themselves hope okay. that they can, they can find their way that way. Yeah. Well, and in your experience, what do you see happening with people or in people once they make that commitment? How does that materially change things? Oh, gosh, it's it's amazing to watch. I, that's just why I love doing what I do so much. I get so excited. As you know, I get yeah. on the oh, yeah. I'll be on the telephone talking to one of my clients um, and and I get so excited getting to celebrate with them sure. the way they feel when they start to, um, you know, their confidence starts to build. They start to feel the changes happening. They start to notice that they walk into a room and instead of hiding when someone pulls out their phone to take a picture, they're right there in the front. Okay. And, you know, they're packing up old clothes and they're getting rid of them or they're reaching out and um, showing up on Facebook in a way that they're sharing their life with people. Maybe they're doing their first live because they've come from being so shy and with low self-confidence and not wanting to share their life with anyone to realizing their life is getting amazing, it's becoming amazing, oh, yeah. sure. and they want to share it, and they want to share their gifts and, and yeah. things like that. And so there's so many cool things that start to happen. And um, and so as a coach, you know, you get to just keep celebrating those things and encouraging them to do more because, you know, it's really all you, – you overcome – when you overcome a concept that's been holding you back, it is – so powerful because it's not just going to help you in your life. It's going to help others overcome their own concepts. Sure. Okay. And then do you then see, you get to see then, right? These people going forward and sharing and then in turn helping other people, correct? Exactly. Exactly. And that is what's so important. You know, I mean, we talked about that health, wellness and spirituality was our focus when we talked last week. And and seriously, you know, um, spirituality is is uh, spreading love. It's sharing. It's giving. It's, 
you know, being available to others to help them to love themselves. And seriously, if you are not overcoming the concepts that are holding you back, that are limiting you to stay small, to stay sick, to stay, um, you know, in that world of low self-confidence where you're not sharing your gifts with others. When you um, listen to your concepts more than you listen to your heart, then you are, you know, you're not the only one suffering. And we, and, but the, the problem is oftentimes our concept is teaching us, you know, it, it's holding us back because we don't want to be a burden to someone else who's sure. going to be our teacher, okay. or we yeah. don't want to take away from our family because we are, you know, we're too busy taking care of our family. We can't take care of ourselves. And the, and so what happens is that you're showing up as, you know, not, you're showing up limited. You're showing up, you're showing them how to show up limited. You're showing them how to hold back and not be their best self and their best teacher. And so it's so important to start to recognize your concepts and challenge yourself to overcome them. I love it. Yeah. So it's about how you show up then really in the end, isn't it? Oh, completely. Completely. I love that. All right. And for those of you listening all over the world here, you, Cindy, you said something that I want to repeat, and I'll just make sure that people get this, because I think it's really, really important, and that is spirituality is equal to spreading love. Spirituality is spreading love, and there are many ways to do that. You've been taking us through some of the ways that you do, and there are still a number of things that we want to talk about on the show today. Luckily, we have another 20 minutes, but first we're going to cut to a commercial break. When we come back, we promised earlier in the show that we would talk about fear. We're going to do that some more in detail. You're listening to Decide to Transform on Ohm Times Radio. Stick with us. We'll be right back. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. Hi, I'm Tomas Garza, host of Decide to Transform on Ohm Times Radio. Thank you for listening. You know, there's only so much we can cover on a one-hour show. If you'd like to hear further from me, I happily offer personalized teachings. Get your very own voice recording or book a one-on-one consultation. Ask a burning question and gain clarity on achieving massive transformation in your life. Details available on my website. TomasGarza.com My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. I am Fidel Mshombo. I was born in a city called the Bukavu in the Congo. We were a loving family, and then, boom! Everything that I had disappeared in a single day. People think that when you are a refugee and they resettle to America and all your problems are done. They don't understand that that's the beginning of everything. I was not born a refugee. I was made one. It's time we welcome refugee families with open arms. Learn more at EmbraceRefugees.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council.
Welcome back to Decide to Transform. I am here live with my wife, Cindy Garza, who's joined us for the second straight week here, guys. I've been really, really fortunate to have this conversation, and I hope that you're getting so much out of it. We're talking about our concepts around health, wellness, and spirituality. And as promised earlier in the show, during this last segment, what we want to do is come back to the notion of fear which underlies all of our concepts around health, around wellness, around spirituality, in fact, around relationships and life in general. So Cindy, in your work as a transformational wellness coach, what is the number one expression of fear that you see? Hmm, number one expression of fear. Um... Let's see. Wow. Uh, <laughs> there, there's so many. I don't know mm, if there's a yes, number one. Are. I don't okay. know if there's a number one. But, you know, um, fear is equal to a concept. You know, that is, I think people, people get, um, they don't like to use the word fear, right? Sure, right. Um, concept is much more, I don't know, safe of a word maybe. Not it doesn't feel as strong, it doesn't feel fearful, you know. It just right, feels right. like this is something I believe, um, but this belief is holding us back. And when we allow a belief to hold us back, it's holding us back out of fear, and that is just what it is. And you know, we all have concepts, we all have fear, we're all working on it. I hope, I hope, you know, <laughs> you're right. Yes. That, that is, that is the only way out of, of this place that we are stuck. And so really, I mean, the, the buzzwords I'm using fear concepts, stuck, um, limitation, you know, we limit ourselves. These are all words that describe the whole, I mean, when it really comes down to it, it's all fear and it's all, um, the things that we have to work through in order to move beyond this this limit that we've created for ourselves. And so um, when I talk to clients, they have so many. Um, they've been living in this world where they have completely limited themselves on okay. you know on the concept that that they used for a long time to keep them from reaching out for help. Sure. All right. um, or, or they reached out for help many, many times, but they weren't ready to commit to change. They were not ready to actually do it. They knew they should. They'd been told their whole life they needed to. They should. And so they were trained to just do it because they'd been told to. But it wasn't coming from their own heart. They didn't have a why. Okay. You know, they didn't, sure. they didn't know why. They just knew they should. And really, it's hard to create anything worthwhile. It's hard to create something that is going to last. It's hard to um, create something that really you can take ownership of if it's all based on need. Because need, you right. know, is based on fear. Right. Um, and so that that's such an important thing. And I find that when people come to me, and they're open. They're open to talk about the fear. They're open to talk about what was what's been holding them back all along. Okay. And they're open to exploring um, different ways of looking at things, different habits to work on in their life that can start moving the dial forward. That's when they can really start to change and grow. And you know, we get to start celebrating their wins, and they they start having them. Okay, right. And a word that comes up for me in listening to you is openness, uh, openness to come forward in the first place, and then openness to explore and go deeper. We talked about a number of different fears before the show here. And what I'm curious is, let's list some of them, because I know that there are people out there listening that can relate to these because they show up in so many aspects of our lives. Let's go through some of these. And the question then is going to be, if you know that a client or a prospective client 
is under the influence of this fear or suffering from this fear or exhibiting a certain fear, then what do you then say to help them move through that? And the first one that pops to my mind is the fear of having to follow through with something. Now, if you know somebody's afraid of that, how do you work with them? Oh man, that is such a biggie. That's a biggie for me. You know, um, I don't want to miss out. And I, that's the main reason that people don't follow through with something is that if, if they follow through with one thing, they're limiting themselves and they're missing out on something else that at the moment feels better. And my ego's saying, oh, don't do that, don't do that. If you do that, you're not gonna get to do this. And so, um, you know, the we go, the we go, the ego has a lot of control mm -hmm. over our actions when uh, we've been listening to our fears and our concepts for so long. That's why we have them, you know. Right. Um, is that yeah. the ego has has been sitting there on our shoulder, reminding us, you know, just whispering in our ear constantly about our limitations, what we're good at and what we're not good at. You know, yes. and, and so what I think is so important with my clients is, is recognizing, um, and I have a wonderful program that I coach and it's right. based on small habits, just really creating small, healthy habits in your life. One baby step at a time, because sure. if, if you take someone who is in fear of change, which most people who are wanting to get healthy, both in their mind and in their body, um, you know, sometimes, uh, they're, they're just, they're afraid, they're, they're just afraid of a lot of things, sure. you know, what right. they need is they need wins. They need wins. They need to okay. celebrate wins. And it does not matter if it's a huge win. It does not matter if it's, they walked into the store and somebody said, oh my gosh, you look amazing. What's different? You know, and, and they just, you know, they have the opportunity to say, Hey, I'm working with a health coach. I feel wonderful. You know, it's really awesome. Thank you for noticing. Right. That is like one of the biggest wins. Um, yeah, yeah. that, that is huge. And then when they get to share that with a health coach, then your health coach is on cloud nine, because that is what you're shooting for. And to some people, that's a, a huge, a huge thing. A, a win that is exciting for them can be the fact that they zip their pants up for the first time. Right. They pulled those pants out of the closet. They have been their dream pants that they bought five years ago and they've never fit, but it was always their goal, you know, to fit into yes. that pair of jeans. And they finally pulled it on and it was easy to zip them up. It wasn't even lying on your back trying to zip them up, but that's what they're celebrating, you know. It's a huge thing for someone to just drink water throughout the day. And when they can celebrate that, these are wins. These are things where they're learning, wait a minute. Okay, in the past, I told everyone that I was a horrible water drinker, and now I'm drinking 80 ounces a day. I'm eating more, I'm drinking more than the minimum. You know, I mean, these little wins when someone who feels like they can't be successful at something, and you get to celebrate little tiny wins with them, um, that yeah. when they all add up, they add up to big wins, a whole lot of small wins, you know, is success. Um, and so really, you know, setting my clients up to have small wins and then okay. celebrating each small win with them is what's making the difference. I love that. Okay. And the amount or the size of the win doesn't matter as long as it's happening. So what happens then once people start to gather some momentum and they change, do you ever see a fear that people aren't going, does any, a client ever say to you, for example, that, well, I'm afraid that people aren't going to like me or I'm going to be so different that they won't recognize me. Or I'm afraid of this new body, uh, this new way of being. Do you ever see that fear once people start a process of getting healthy? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, so often people, the, the biggest thing holding people back, social people that is, is the fact that they're not going to be able to go out and party with their friends and eat with their friends right. and you know drink with their friends, whatever that looks like. 
And so, um, so that is a biggie. And that's something that, that we do have to work on working through. And, you know, when someone decides they want change in their life, you often have to move away from toxicity. Okay. I'm not going to lie. It's right. not always super easy. But when you start getting better, you also realize, you start feeling healthier both in your mind and in your body. You realize that you um, that, that your need for the toxic people in your life lessens. Okay. And right. you, it doesn't mean that you don't still love them at the heart. You, you know who they are and you love them, but you're yeah. just, you kind of stop spending as much time with them, but that's okay because you're happier, you know, and that's a hard thing to do. Um, it, it doesn't mean that you have to totally give them up and it doesn't mean there's any rules on it either. You know, you mm -hmm. <laughs> choose yeah. your battles, but, um, but it, oftentimes people start to kind of reformulate their life schedule. I guess is kind of a way of putting it, <laughs> yes. you know, that the people they hang out with, the things that they do when they hang out with friends becomes different. And sometimes, you know, people who, who really decide, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to pay this forward. I want to help other people feel better too. And instead of, um, you know, and that looks like so many different ways, it can look like you, they become health coaches with me, or it can just look like they start to inspire others and maybe that's where they start anyway. You yeah. know, they start inspiring yeah. others by um, changing the way that they eat when they go out. You know, they, they choose healthy stuff. They ask for something on the, you know, salad dressing on the side, or they, um, they ask to something to be made a specific way, not in an annoying way, but just, you know, straightforward. Um, I think it's also something that's being accepted more in the world. People are recognizing people want to be healthier and, and they want them to come to their restaurant. And so they're asking right. for that, you know, and, and so they're inspiring their friends in those ways. And, and they're, you know, meeting for a hike instead of for dinner or, you know, meeting for coffee instead of going out for drinks, whatever it sure. is, there's different ways of doing that, that people are influencing their friends. And, and like I said, sometimes they fall away a little bit, you know, you, you, you pick the times that you're going to be with people that are unhealthy in your environment and you, um, you choose, you know, you start hanging out with people that are healthier and that, that lift you up. And I think it's just so important to recognize that in our lives and, and to, um, be okay with that too. Okay. Yeah. Well, and you, you mentioned toxicity, a phrase that comes to my mind is, healthy boundaries and creating healthy boundaries as you move forward. And you've been telling us a little bit about your coaching practice here on the show and how you work with clients. So how can people that are interested in working with you get in touch with you? Well, they can get in touch with me on Facebook, just under Cindy Garza. I have a, a public, um, my page is public, so it's real easy to access me. You can send me a private message and sure. you can chat. Um, I also have a business page, Awakening Opportunities um, Coaching, Awaken Oppor I'm sorry, Awaken Opportunities Coaching on Facebook. And you can message me there. You can also just, I have a scheduler link on there that you can, um, that you can make an appointment and we can just spend 20 or 30 minutes just talking and, and exploring, you know, what's important to you and maybe talk, you know, maybe you've discovered what your concept is and you want to talk about it. And, um, I'm open to that and I'd be happy to, um, just explore what that would look like for you. Um, you know, I, I, I work with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis, and I also have the support of my mentorship team that, that supports me and also supports my clients. And it's pretty cool because we do some team coaching, and and uh, we have just unlimited support that, that helps us help guide our clients to um, better themselves, to change, you know, where they're at and what they, you know, or not change what they want, but help them achieve what they want, whether it's, you know, physical, emotional, um, you know, financial, uh, whatever it looks like, we have tools to help people change that. And I, you know, okay. that's what I'm passionate about doing. Love doing it. Yeah. Well, and for those of you listening out there all around the world, I know uh, because Cindy and I are married and I've been on this journey with her fortunate enough to to see this happening. So 
In the time that we have left, there are clearly a number of ways that people can benefit from working with you. You just mentioned it. It could be any arena of their life, whether it's their physical health, mental and emotional, spiritual, financial, etc. So what else would you like to tell people that might be interested in working with you today? Ooh, chase after that concept and stepped into it, you know, just face it and deal with it. Because, you know, uh, that thinking that you have to limit yourself because you always have, um, you should be able to do it yourself because you know how to do everything. Um, all of these things, none of them hold any power. None of them have a good foundation. They are all, um, you know, our fears. And um, I know that for myself, I, Every time I face a fear and I, I focus on um, moving through it, dealing with it, that concept falls away. Okay. And, you know, it's powerful. So, uh, you know, reach out, whether it's to me or someone that's been on your heart lately that, you know, you've been listening to. If there is a way to overcome your limitations, the things that you have set, you know, on yourself to keep yourself small, stuck, feeling um, you know, like you can't accomplish things, step into it, face it, deal with it. Because boy, on the other side of that fear is some really amazing experiences. And I just want that for everyone. I want everyone to be able to achieve those things. I love that. Well, thank you so much. And thank you very much for appearing two weeks in a row as a guest here on the show. It's been a real pleasure to have you on. Thank you. It's been mm -hmm. awesome to be here. Love it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. You've been listening to Decide to Transform here on Ohm Times Radio. We'll be back next week. Remember, it's 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, every Tuesday, live. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next week. <laughs>